So today I have this LG Plasma TV. It's a model 50 PG20 50 P Paul G George 20. And the problem is you get a click. It looks like it's going to work. The LED indicator turns blue, but we never get a picture. So how would you troubleshoot a problem like this? Let's go ahead and uh, make some voltage measurements real quick and see if we can figure out exactly what's going on. Okay, so I'm looking at these connectors on the power supply. They're in the upper right hand corner of the power supply board and they feed both the Y sustain and the Z sustain board on this set. And the pins that I'm primarily interested in are VA and VS. So let's take a look at VS, turn the set on and we get 193 volts which is good. Now let's go over here and we'll check VA should be around 60. So that's good that tells me the power supply is working. Uh, for future reference there's normally a sticker on the back of the plasma panel that lets you know what the voltages should be. This one's up here in the upper right hand corner. It has all the specs on it. So We've got our voltages that we need, but we still have no picture. So let's take a look around and see if we can find anything else that might be suspicious. So now on some of these sets, if you suspect a buffer board, and just from experience, I've had an, a fairly high failure rate on buffer boards. We have an upper, lower, upper buffer and a lower buffer board. And uh, like I said, just from experience, these little IC chips under the heat sinks do an incredible amount of work. And they tend to fail just because there's so much going on and such a high voltage. They have uh, about 200 volts on the chips themselves. And it's just, if it's not a perfectly good manufactured chip, you will get a failure. So one thing that you can try on a set like this is you can actually disconnect the upper buffer unhook the plug, unplug it, swing it out of the way, fire the setup and see if you see any trace of a picture on the lower half and you can also do this with the lower buffer. Now if you disconnected the upper buffer and you saw part of a picture on the lower part of the screen you'd know that the upper buffer was definitely the culprit. The other thing that you can do is listen to the Y sustain board because it normally makes a buzzing noise when it's operating correctly and if you've worked on these sets any time in the past you'll get to know the sound that the uh, Y and the Z sustain boards make and what's normal and what's not normal. This one, I suspect the Y sustain board because as soon as I turn it on, I get a slight buzz and then the buzz goes right away like it's going into the protect mode. Okay, so I've disconnected the upper buffer board. I've completely removed it from the set just so it's not in the way and hanging around here. And the next thing I'm gonna do is fire the set up And now I do hear normal sound, so let's go around to the front of the set. Okay, so I'm out here at the front of the set. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what we get now. We do get the bottom half of the picture. It does light up, it primes the panel. I never actually see any video in the picture. Now on some of these sets, if you don't have both buffer boards attached, you will not get video because the way they have designed the data path is both boards have to be intact before it'll actually send the video data to the screen. So let's take a look at the upper buffer board and see if we can figure out where the defect might be. Okay, so I have the upper buffer board. I've done a little bit more troubleshooting and I have determined that indeed one of these chips is defective and it's this top one right here and it stands to reason that the one on the top of the set is going to generate or have the most heat, not necessarily generate the most heat, but because of all the other chips and heat rising, it's definitely going to be the hottest running one in the set. And now one of the things that I've done to troubleshoot a problem like this in the past is with the ohm meter in ohms, is you'll notice there's one large pad here and it's many, many pins connected together. And that's normally a floating ground, which means it's isolated from the main chassis ground through a transformer. 
So I'm going to use that as my ground. And now you'll notice that there are three pins connected together right here. And there's many, many uh, plate throughs on the circuit board that sends the voltage to the various chips. So if we check between these two, we should see some kind of a, normally, a high resistance. Now I'm only seeing 90 ohms, which is way too low. Uh, by contrast, I'll go ahead and pull the lower buffer board out, and we'll take a peek at it real quick. Okay, so here is the lower buffer board, and by contrast, you can see that the pins are set up almost a mirror image of the upper board uh, before they were on this side, now they're on this side. So let's, we'll use the same large pad as ground, and we'll check over here and see what we get. And now we get uh, 20, 30 million ohms and rising. The meter can't even read that high. So that's a good indication that this is a good board. So we'll bring the other one back, set it next to it. See the difference? 90 ohms to there and over 30 million ohms to there. So uh, we're going to have to make a determination that it is the uh, upper buffer board. They call it the wide drive top on this one. Wide drive top and wide drive bottom, I realize they are upside down. Okay, so what I've done now is I've just attached my negative lead to the floating ground. I have my ohm meter in the beep continuity position. So whenever there is continuity, it will beep. And this is what really clinched the deal for me is I went through here and I measured these pins and with this meter it's so fast that you can just drag it across and I came across several pins 53 ohms 10 ohms 7 ohms and so that pretty much tells me without a shadow of a doubt that there are shorts in this chip and I don't know if they're the same or they may be different pins on the bottom here. But that, that certainly tells me that there are defects on this chip right here. So next I'm going to try to obtain a replacement chip and just try to replace that. Worst case scenario, if your soldering skills are not the best at replacing one of these chips, you certainly could just order a complete wide drive top board, wide buffer board and take your chances there. I think you're uh, most likely if you get one that hasn't uh, been in a set that had a cracked screen. One thing that can damage these boards is if you do have a cracked screen it will almost certainly instantaneously blow out these little buffer chips. But the chips do have a part number. They are available. Uh, places like Shop Jimmy uh, do carry these parts. They are a little bit tricky to replace for the simple fact that they are very close spaced pins and uh, most of them have a center pad, uh, which is a heat sink pad that solders to the middle of the circuit board as well as just the pin. So there'll be a, a metal plate on the bottom of this chip that attaches. So well, I'm gonna call this one part one of possibly two videos. If I can find a replacement chip, um, I'm gonna go ahead and try to replace it on here, hopefully without damaging the connector and hopefully resolving this issue very cost effectively to both myself and the customer. If this is the end of the video and I did not have success, thank you for watching once again. Hopefully you can uh, help keep these sets out of the recycle bin and out of the landfill. And Remember you can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. Everybody have a great day and take it easy. Bye-bye.